Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. Yes, we are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Little warning screen just in case. Also, man, twitch.com is where you can catch the live streams. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. Um, and don't forget, man, we got Patreon. Any show that you think, oh, man, you should watch this, you should watch that, trust me. It's on Patreon. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, season, final season, episode 17. We halfway through the season. That's tough. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. A recent survey shows that UK high streets are coming under increasing financial pressure. A quarter of all small retailers cite high business rates as one of their biggest challenges. Some high street shops face rises of up to 150% and many fear being pushed out of business altogether. High Court Enforcement Agents Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are in Kingsbury, North London. It's a good day when we start with Steve, man. Like, uh, uh, because I don't like starting with the rookies, man. Start with the veterans that's been here season one. To recover a debt of almost £2,000 owed by the owner of a bridal wear shop. We're off to see Mr. Ali Amin trading as Sultana Fashion and we're looking to collect £1,910 and 22 pence. You said it's Sultana Fashions? Yes. Yeah. Is that their current address? <laughs> I think this is a wedding dress shop. Uh, there it is. Sultana Fashions owes the money to a company who negotiate lower business rates for retailers. Dissatisfied with their services, shop owner Ali Amin refused to pay the company's full fees. Right, Steve. So you just think that you could just... You're going to have to show up in court. And if you don't show up, they automatically win. So now look at you. Now they're going to come take somebody wedding dress. Let's go and see Sultana Fashion. Mr. Amin was taken to court and lost the case. Now he must pay the £1,910 debt in full today. It's not even that much. Do you work here? Yes. Hello, oh, sir. Are you Ali? No. Sir, uh, my name's Max Carraher. I'm an enforcement agent here with the High Court writ. Yes. We're here for Ali Amin. He's not there. Where is he, He's sir? Not. He's not. He's lying. That's him. 100% that's him. Yeah. yeah, where is he, sir? He's not here. Could you get him on the phone for me, please? No, we can't. Why can't you do that, sir? What's the problem? We've got a high court writ. What's what your you name, sir? Ali Ami. You're Ali? Okay, no, excellent. I'm not. Oh. Ali's dad. You're Ali's dad? Yes. Okay. But Max is suspicious. Ain't we all? As the business is named on the writ. I'm not gonna lie, hold on, let's talk about this. This, this little corner shop is big as hell. Did y'all see how big this place is? <laughs> and as the agents believe that this is On the, the Ali Amin they're looking for, they have every right to continue enforcement. What's this? What's that? That's a debt? What do you want now? I want £1,910 and £22. Pounds. Okay. Let me explain you something. You, okay, you explain to me something. This is a cheating people. Who? Who is? Yeah, this is the company. <laughs> Wait, go back. You see how he said the words to him and how he repeated them? Bro, bro be bugging out, really. It's two pounds. Okay. Let me explain you something. You, okay, you explain to me something. This is a cheating people. Who? Who is? Yeah, this is the company. Mr. Amin now appears to be taking full responsibility for the debt and is keen to tell Max his side of the story. I received a call from this company and... 
we give you offer to reduce your business rights. Business rights. Okay. He said, yes, uh, we can offer you less business rate. I said, this is good. This is good. I said, look, I can't pay any money in advance. No, no. He said, we don't need money. We need just 71 pound in advance. What he said, I will give you email now. Please just sign that document for me. After three weeks, he said 700. I'm not gonna lie, you got scammed. They scammed you. They got you. Pound. What 700 pound for what? He said, because already we signed agreement and you must pay this money for us. It's cheating. I understand yeah. that, but what a court will see yeah. is that you sign the paperwork. The company's final fee was more than the amount Mr. Amin was expecting, but the courts ruled that he was contractually obliged to pay. Did they do the work? Fixed fee, signed agreement on the fixed fee. Yeah. You've got to be so careful what you sign, Mr. Amin. How long have you been open in this place here? Nearly one year. Is business good? Not good. Is the profit margins in wedding dresses low? No, it's uh, because it's selling, it's uh, not it's good. It's wrong area. We have many problems. Believe me, until the end of the month, we can't pay the, the rent. When you're listening to people on how they get into debt, you do, on some occasions, actually feel sorry for them. And you think to yourself, that could be any one of us in that same position. It's clear that the business has fallen on hard times. But Max and Steve are duty-bound to enforce this writ one way or another. Have you got any family, any friends who can help us all? Nobody can help you. Uh, Nobody can help you. Have you got anything you can put towards the debt? I just have to ask. I gotta like, be clear, like a few of these dresses be expensive, don't they? They probably go for a little nice little pretty penny. This is a check on which we have. No cap, I do feel bad for bro. He did get scammed. They definitely scammed him. Yeah. This is why you don't listen to people who do cold calls. I'll hang up on you. If I'm not looking for it directly, then don't call me about it. Uh, you got enough for cash? We can we can pay two hundred sixty now. I don't know if they'll accept We have it. this amount. I, I can only ask. Max calls the office to see if the claimant will accept Mr. Amin's offer of a down payment of £260. Um, sorry, Helen, I'm with one of the gentlemen now. Our clients will not accept any part payment or arrangement on this case. The case needs to be paid in full. Paid in full. So, if you do so, will result in sorting that. out recovery to remove goods. Lovely. Cheers, thank Thanks you. so much. Cheers. Bye. Bye. It's not good news. That will be removal of goods yeah. for sale at public auction. Okay, if we haven't... If, if you haven't what? Take you want us to take it? Yeah. What's the total value of these racks of clothing? Well, maybe 80,000. What's going on, dude? What's going on? What's... Okay, if we haven't... If, if you haven't what? Take what's up with his ear, though? I'm trying to be sensitive to the situation. This might be real, like... But that's that's crazy. You want us to take it? Yeah. What's the total value of these racks of clothing? Well, maybe eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Yeah. If I told you I yes. haven't this money, yes. what you will do? You will take goods. Take goods. The retail value of the dresses may be eighty thousand pounds, but at auction they would fetch only a fraction of that amount. So the agents would have to clear a substantial amount of stock. But as Max starts an inventory, he spots something. This is all expensive that ain't aftershave. How are they paid for? I don't know, Mr. You don't know how they're paid for? That's £152 for that. Hundreds of pounds for this. The perfumes and watches would be easier to remove than a large quantity of dresses. But Mr. Amin has other ideas. Who does it belong to? Yes. Who does it belong to? To suppliers. Have you got all the receipts? Because this is hundreds of pounds worth of stock. Okay. This is belong to me. Yes. This is not belong to me. That's why I've asked for a receipt because it's I in will... your shop. It's reasonable of me to assume that it may belong to you. We can't. Okay. 
You can't take the goods if you like. I can. Yeah. Okay. What's the point in that? What's the point in that? This is... Uh, look. Yes? I worked Sir, very when hard. when you shout at me and point at my face, I I'm not going to communicate with you. I said I'll look round at the assets. I'm looking round at all the assets. I am not stolen this so to, don't, to, don't, to give to the don't shout cheating people. I am not cheating. You're shouting. Oh, right, is, don't shout at me. Well. Okay, sir, what sir, I'm going to do sir, now sir. is I'm going to start removing goods. No, you goods. don't be sorry. No, no. You, you do, do another thing. Please yes. come inside. No. We can't discuss. Sir, I'm going to... We gonna... have client outside. We have right. people as well. Are you going to pay I'm the one thousand... Sir, please don't shout at me. Uh, Are you going to pay... Are you going to pay the £1,910.22? pence? With Mr. Amin. Let's, to- let's be real though. I always think wedding dresses and anything in, in a wedding is a scam. They know you need it. They're going to upcharge it through the roof. So a scammer got a scammer. In my opinion. His outrage over the debt against the agents. The case has taken an ugly turn. It will take all of Stephen Max's negotiating skills to get the £1,900 the they way. came for. She ain't do nothing. And then he found and trust. Oh, oh, right, don't is, shout at me. Well. Okay. Now, with no proof that the expensive perfumes don't belong to Mr. Amin, Max adds them to the inventory. But as their value won't cover all of the £1,910 debt, the agents will have to remove some of Mr. Amin's bridal stock as well. But before they call recovery, Max wants to make it clear that taking goods will incur extra fees. The balance goes up from £1,910 to £2,540. This is because we have to get a van 600. and staff down to remove the goods. You're fucking no. the people. Sorry? You're fucking Who? the people. Who? Me personally? No, uh, the, the everything. Not because me. You, you protect you protect the, the, the cheating people. Who does? You and I, the court. I have to look no, up. No, no, no. The court, you went to court, you lost. Contractual agreements are pretty straightforward if you sign them. After the interest of the client, so I'll ask you this, this final time, sir. Can you make the payment of £1,910? This amount we can't. Okay. In that case, sir, you will leave me with absolutely no choice but to escalate the case to the removal stage. When people are wrapped up in the dispute that's ongoing, it is difficult for us because I need to convince him that he needs to see it my way, and that's a tremendous ask. The agents have now been in the shop for over an hour. With no new offer to settle the debt, Max has no choice but to call for a recovery vehicle. How are you doing today for work? Brilliant. Right, it's a wedding dress shop. Brilliant, mate. Uh, NW9, immediately roll out for me, please, my friend. Steve goes to tell Mr. Amin that a van is on its way. The vans have all been organised. It's not, not nothing gets organised. It is. He's on. He's been on the phone to the vans. It's now. Wait, wait. Don't cancel the van. Cancel, cancel, cancel the van. When you pay, sir, I can cancel the van. This is not fair. But because we are, Careful. we are people. Don't, I'm not, we're not going to behave like this, okay? I feel very threatened. Behave. Do you understand? No. We are ve- we no. are work very hard. Oh, man. When you're punching you, you things, now, unacceptable behaviour, sir. Because you are unfair. I'm not unfair. Yeah, you are I'm unfair. I'm very fair. With the business now at serious risk, Mr Amin's wife leaves to try and raise some funds. I feel pain to that people cheating me. I understand. People do tend to go through a cycle with their emotions. Obviously, the first thing... I'm not going to lie. He got scammed, though. He did get scammed 100%, but at the same time, man, you got to be... You're a business owner, man. You got to be careful. As they see us, they're angry because we're at the door. And once you resolve that issue, you then get the emotions of what they can and can't do. So it is a step-by-step process. A few minutes later, Mrs. Amin returns. Now I have the full balance. Take it. Together with their original offer of two hundred and sixty pounds, Mr. and Mrs. Amin are now only three hundred pounds short of the full amount they owe. Right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a phone call, but it's out of my hands. What the decisions? I will call. Do the best. Max goes to call the office. Let me just step out of the shop. Give me one sec. Right, H- Helen, the option is either removal or 
take the 2260 and tell them they've got 28 days to pay. So they want a full a full removal. No worries. Cheers. Bye. The claimer. Oh, they're trying to bankrupt them. They not playing with them. It's real personal. This feels personal. Rejects the offer. Max goes to break the bad news. And World War Three starts. Right. I, I won't beat around the bush. The client has refused the offer. The client wants a removal of goods done. They will take control of the stock. How much? The, no, they know what they want. The full balance. The two thousand five. Two thousand five hundred. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's judge. Let's judge. Mugalia. Khalas. Mrs. Amin for a second. That's that's the money with the um, removal fee on it, though, like with the van and stuff. In time, can try reverse and find that. the rest of the money. Just as a removal van arrives at the back of the shop, you gotta pay them. Speed to the drivers. Yeah, this is the back of the shop, mate. But almost immediately. Mrs. Amin returns. Max, one minute. I think they're going to pay it all. It seems like she's managed to raise the balance needed to stop the removal. Come on, come on. This. this is a dirty money you collected. 2,500, 40, 22p. Yeah, they cost themselves 60, 600 pounds. They could have just did this in the first place and got it done with. Now you got to pay an extra 600. Justice must be 22p. I got to give you the change. I have to. I have to. Yeah, you are. Because, Bring it. Oh, because oh. like you, I am an honest person. Okay? With the debts now paid off in full, the recovery van is released. Go from this uh, door, please. Take care. It's been a trying case for the agents. It was really, really hard work, wasn't it? Got to read what you signed. I imagine them recovery vans came out and got paid for nothing. For the drive. Great job. In 2016, nearly 80,000 county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales. The average value exceeded £3,500, while the total value reached almost £280 million. Two hundred and sixteen county court judgments were issued against businesses every day of last year. Two sixteen, crazy. High court enforcement agents Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in East Molesey, southwest London. They're here to collect a debt of almost eleven and a half thousand pounds owed by a small business. We're going to go and see GHG Organisation Limited. Uh huh. What sort of company is it? Their website says they work in like renewable energy systems. Okay. I think you would imagine that they'd have assets. But the address on the writ appears to be residential and not commercial. So the agents suspect this could be the home of company director oh. Abbas Kadar. Interested to know who that car is though, that Volvo. Yes. If the Volvo belongs to the debtor company, it could be seized to offset the debt if no offer of payment is made. It's quite a nice house. That's quite a big house. Anybody in there? Trying to clamp the Volvo. Hello there. Hi. Can I come and speak to you? Uh, so, my name is Gary Brown. I'm an enforcement agent. This is my colleague, Connor Jackson. I'm basically here with a High Court writ against yeah. GHG Organisation Limited. Yeah. Is that yourself? Is that no. your company? No. It's not. We are a firm of accountants. Okay. GHN uh, There, you're one of your clients, are One of my clients. Okay. Can I see confirmation of that, please? What confirmation? Confirmation that you're not GHG. Right. Can you go out? I'll, 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 I'll get you. Okay. I'm going to wait okay. inside the property until I've had that proof, okay? I'm not happy about this, sir. You may not be happy, sir, but that's the way it is, I'm afraid. It appears that the debtor company has used their accountant's address as their registered office. It's common That's business true. practice That's to do up. this for the purpose of receiving mail. But Gary needs to see proof that he isn't the debtor they're looking for. 
yeah. regarding this visit, yeah. I need, just need to be satisfied yeah. that you are yeah. not... If you leave the house, no, I will I'm get... I'm not going to leave the house. In that case, I'm not providing anything. You cannot... Then I'll look around the house. No, you cannot. So no, don't touch me. No. Don't no, touch no. me. No. Leave this house. I'm not leave, leaving I house. said I will provide the proof. Then provide the proof and make things easier. Please. Sir, don't try and close doors on me. Okay? You're not helping the situation by acting the way you are. Hello there. Police. Hi. Have you permission to enter people's premises? We don't need permission. I asked you to go back there. Why won't you go back there? Because you tried to close the door on me. I have to go in there to get some stuff. I don't know what Then please do that. When somebody's asking you to leave and they don't want you looking around and they're just causing you problems, it's usually for one reason, and that's because yeah, there's something it. to hide. Yeah. That's definitely Despite him. the man's defensiveness, Gary and Connor won't leave until they're sure he isn't Abbas Kadar. What's your name? Can I see, some, see your ID, please, just to prove that you're not the director of the company we're looking what for? Driver's Drive license, passport would be brilliant. Thank you. Yes, yeah, not him. The man, Mr. Burge, isn't the debtor after all. Really him, but okay. his behaviour has raised the agent's suspicions that there's more to this story than meets the eye. So you've got my proof. What else do you want now? Proof that they're not trading for me. Do you understand what a registered office is? I do. It's usually an accountant's. But sometimes those accountants double up as trading addresses. But as Mr. Burge goes into his office to find paperwork, Gary spots a figure behind the glass. Excuse me, have you got some ID as well, please, sir? No, sorry. You haven't got any ID? No. I find That's that hard to believe. Him. What's your name? What's your name, please? Do you want to talk to me? Sorry? Do you want to talk to me? What reason have you got to not to talk to me? Girl, Come I'm trying to be invisible. We see you. You're a large person. Come on, so this is my office. Do you mind? But I'm asking this gentleman some questions. It's up to him to... But what what to reason do you have not to talk to me? I don't know, sir. I just need to be satisfied who you are. That's all, and then I can leave you be. Have you got any identification, please? No, I said I am. Sorry. This whole situation is very suspicious, and you're not being very cooperative. With the man refusing to show the agents his face, Connor thinks on his feet. He goes outside to try to get a look at the man's face. And then checks the social media profile of the debtor, Abbas Kadar. See, I think it might be him. That's him. That's what I'm thinking. It, who is that? That's Abbas Kadar. Abbas Kadar. That's this gentleman That's here. That's what I'm thinking. Are we right in thinking that, sir? Okay. Are we right in thinking that you are... <laughs> Roll look like, all right, I'm Nick. <laughs> Abbas Kadar? Yeah. When you have a stamp decision to try and find out whether somebody is lying or not, and when you catch them in that lie, it's always satisfying to, to know that that's it, they've got nowhere else to go now, and it's almost the final nail in the coffin, and they have to own up and face it. The agents are face to face with the director of the debtor company. Now they have to try to get to the bottom of this complex situation. But why are you here? To see the accountants. This is now trading address, this is our accountant's address, and I, I feel awful about the position they're in. It may be a coincidence that the agents have found Mr. Kadar here today, but the writ can now be enforced. Obviously, your company has been taken to court. OK. So this is a high court writ. OK. And basically, we're looking for £11,471 to be paid. OK. And 36 pence. 11000 Well, you better talk to your accountant since you're in this house barefoot. Go ahead, ask him where the funds. And what if this amount can't be paid? This needs to be resolved. With Mr. Kadar indicating that he can't pay, Connor turns up the pressure. Is this your Volvo, is it? It's not mine. Whose is it, though? Whose is the Volvo? It's my wife's car. Is your wife available to, to show proof that it's hers? Well, it's a lease vehicle. I'm going to go and check the um, HP on the vehicle. I don't know if it is on finance okay. or a lease. I'll back in a second. Connor, I've got a picture of the car here. Oh, have you? Oh, that makes yeah. life a bit easier. Connor does a quick vehicle check online. Lex Auto Lease. Uh, yeah. That'll do it then. The car is on finance and can't be seized. 
but with no other goods to bargain with, the agents need to see whether there are any company assets inside the vehicle. I'm gonna go and have a look in the car, mate. Look in the car for what? You've realised this. I don't know. What, I don't know what could be in the boot. Anything to do with work? If you're driving it, you could have anything in it. You but can't I'm gonna do anything with the car. What's in the car that you, you don't can't. want me to see? There's nothing in the car. You so what's the problem? We're gonna have a quick look in the car well, then. You can't just. I can. Just make your rules. You can't. I've not made up any rules. That's if, not if, my vehicle, and you haven't got any permission or documentation to say you can look in that vehicle. Ax, please go out. I don't think they will. We, we won't be leaving until uh, this is you, resolved. You go out and I, I need to crack on with work, please. Just give me five minutes and I promise we'll all go. Under pressure to get the agents out of his accountant's house, Mr. Kadar so, makes a U-turn. Why, why is he really in the career, though? Like, what? I'm if if, if we... If we out with you now. So what can we... Payment, pay it. How much? Was it? 11,000... Four hundred and seventy-one pound thirty-six pence. Can you split the amount into three payments? No, we need half of the debt paid. If we can get six thousand yes, pound paid, and then I'm happy to do an arrangement on that. I don't think six is possible. What I'm saying, if we can do to get away from this situation today, I could pay a third of that amount now, a third next week, and a third the following week, so the whole thing's sorted in two weeks. But that that first third isn't going to be enough. Can I go in there for one minute without being followed, please? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Moments later, after talking to his accountant, Mr. Kadar has a new offer. Yeah, you move some money around, do this, do that. Have you got partnership? We're talking about the full payment? Yeah. I understand that. Gary, mate, he's paying in full. It appears that Mr. Kadar has managed to find the money after all and pays off the debt in full. Probably what did the accountant pay it? Can you sign there, please, to say that you've paid us the money? And then you're gone straight yeah. away? Yeah. Been paid now. Can you please leave? Okay, thank you. It's been a surprising case for the agents. Can you imagine if he goes to see his accountant at that point in time. Embarrassment made him pay that. He wanted him out the career. Time, He's like, listen, get out. And put causing all sorts of problems for him. <laughs> Finding him on Facebook, that was crucial. I'm taking that as my victory. Thank you, mate. I think you should take the commission as your victory. Whatever eleven thousand dollars the commission is on that, that's the victory. Thanks to their perseverance, Gary and Connor got the result they needed. But in Steve, Paul, and Max's next case, how they got more than doubled? Research has shown they tried to get us. Research has shown that the number of squatters in the UK has more than doubled in the last 20 years. But since squatting in residential properties became a criminal offence in 2012... Oh my God, squatters. I really dislike squat. I don't know, I just don't like... <laughs> the problem has shifted to vacant commercial premises and insurance claims regarding damage inflicted by squatters has doubled in recent years. Twenty thousand is a big number. High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill, Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are in New Cross, South London, to carry out a multiple eviction. I think we need to go up this one over here, go left up there, right to the very end of the roundabout. An empty commercial property. Wale the first? Wale the first? Appreciate the follow has been taken over by a small group of squatters. And the agents have the right to force entry today to get them out. The first thing we really need to establish with the landlords, <coughs> if they don't just let us in, is how much, how much damage can we cause? Let's go. Yeah, I might need to call police for this. There we go. OK. As the agents know there's only a small group of people in the house, they haven't requested a police presence. There's That's only a bold choice. It says four to six. But as they approach the property, it becomes immediately clear that this job is going to be far from straightforward. There's iron grills everywhere. The building, a former solicitor's office, has been heavily fortified. So our experience the last time we did one of these, is it took us two hours to get through the door. 
It seems that the squatters managed to get into the building despite the heavy security the landlord installed to keep trespassers out. How have they got in there? That's a Cytex door. Just a big Doris on there. Yeah, and I think that will go. It's clear that the agents will need to use specialist tools to get through the metal security door. Shall I go and bring the van down? Because they're not going to just open the door, are they? While Paul goes to fetch the van, Steve finds out whether anyone is inside. Morning. We're here with a high court writ to take back the property. Would you like to open the door for us so we can talk? And I can show you the paperwork. If you don't open the door, then we have to come in by any means. Guys, uh, okay. Barricading. Barricading Let's the go. door now. Let's roll. Guys, this isn't going to end well. You know we're going to come in no matter what. It seems that the squatters are now blocking up the front door from the inside. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to keep a presence around here. Yeah. And I should sell this and make it into condos or apartments. Think going through the back. Any yeah, problems, no just problem. call us. Yep. Round at the back of the house, Steve meets the contractor who originally secured the property. There's two doors around the back. The large steel door, same type, but potentially because we've got a wooden frame, a bit of a rip off. It seems the doors at the back may be easier to force open. But first, Steve and the contractor need to get over the wooden fence and into the garden. Well, I, Steve looking real agile back there. You better be careful. You know his hips ain't what they used to be, man. Slow down now. I've got a screw in there so you can't get the key in. So if we just take that frame off. Paul brings the van round to the back of the property and takes some tools to Steve. Paul, what we're going to do is get a big bar and rip the door frame out. Yeah. Steve starts to work it, on the door. steel door is loose but won't come free of the frame. Good testament to your doors anyway. So Steve thinks on his feet and goes to talk to the builders working next door. Guys, you got a long scaffold pole we could borrow? Yeah. May they have left one lying around somewhere for us. The young man on the building sites can see if he can find us a long scaffold pole. With a long scaffold pole. Oh, they dedicated to their job. I mean, there's rain and everything. I don't know. Look do Much it. more leverage, and we should be able to pull the Leverage or leverage? See, you did say you had one somewhere. I had one somewhere, didn't Thank I? you very much. I'll bring it back to you, and I'll try not to damage it. And it had to bloody rain today. I'm hoping this doesn't end well for your door. Even with the scaffold pole, they still can't get the door off. I believe that's been in it. To send us to old geezers along to a squatter's eviction, it doesn't matter. I mean, the job is the job. OK, it's a little more physical than our normal run of the mill, but it is the job. So whether we go to one of those or we go to a repossession or a writ of control, you're still up against it. You don't know what you're going to get there till you get to the door. Hello. The agents have now been at the property for over an hour when a man arrives. What's up? Not much. You live here? Uh, yeah, okay. A high court rear possession. Girl uh, coming home like he paid rent. No, didn't he? Like he came from a hard day at work to pay bills or something. Property's been repossessed today. The man who's been living here seems happy to leave. But minutes later, he turns up in the back garden with two of his housemates. This is private property. Would you like to get off, please? Back to the fence, please. Thank you. That's all part of this land, so if you'd be very careful as you go I'm out. recording for evidence, like he gonna take it to court, like these are people that are illegally on my property. No, 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 no. 
<laughs> so are you. Uh, don't fall over anything. Young man. Let me just ask you to leave. This is private property. You, you hid so well in the trees there, I didn't see you. That's private property too. Yeah. So if you'd like to keep off a of private property, we'd be very grateful. The squatters leave the garden and watch proceedings from the road. But the agents still have to get the others out. I don't know how long this goes across. It appears that a bar behind the metal door is keeping it wet shut. So Paul changes tactics. Dish cutter. Man, I ain't never seen them go through this much. Hey, real deal construction work is this The door is finally off. But it seems that the squatters are determined to keep the agents out. Oh! Sorry, I dropped that. That won't work. Why does every place have a washing machine? Hi, guys. Good morning. Obviously, we're in now, so would you like to get your stuff together and make a move? Thank you very, very much. Good morning, all. Good morning. Yeah. Well done. How many of you? Jeez, they tore this place up. Oh my day. It's not like you going in there and peacefully squatting and now writing all over the walls and tearing stuff up. Like, you just tearing stuff up. It's so hard. Which way would you like to go? Uh, well, I think this way is going to be the easiest one. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> You'd have to just. Yeah, please do. The two remaining squatters cooperate with the agents. Good luck. Yep. And leave with their housemates. With squatters, the thing is to keep us out. The barricading inside and everything like that, it's purely to keep us out so we can't get in. Once we're through the barriers and we're in, then they've lost their argument. So then nine times out of ten, they just pack the stuff and go. To complete the eviction, Steve needs to confirm the building is entirely empty. Told Just going to go out and check the building, in case he lied to me. We're this is a commercial property. You can easily convert this into a rental property and get to making money, man. Rent in the end. Nobody's in this one. Nobody's in this one. I can't get that sofa through this doorway. The property is in a shocking state. Terrible. If anybody like a sandwich, there's some bread and cheese here. Oh, and some uh, quiche. The squatters have inflicted extensive damage in every room. When you get into these properties through squat evictions... See, this is why I don't like squatters, man. You can never just be in there peacefully, though. Like, don't tear stuff up. Just be in there and just live quietly here. Yeah. For some reason, they just trash the building and for no particular reason okay they're in there they live in there but why would you want to live in a pigsty or something that's not safe i don't understand that at all it makes you sad really when you consider that the buildings normally are quite nice originally and then they've been totally trashed for no reason at all only the far apart from the fact that they were empty and obviously the squatters had nothing to do. There doesn't seem to be anyone else in the house. But then Steve spots an open hatch yeah. onto the roof. Steve! I knew they was going to run into some problem. There's too much time left in the show. Yep. Where are you? Top floor. All good. I need a pair of something to get up onto the roof. So I need a pair of steps. Would you do me a favour? Just put your foot at the bottom of that, sir. Ladder for me. It's the only thing I've got to call the ladder. And they hop. Well, I can't see nobody on the roofs. Oh, there's nobody up here, so we can lock this up. Coming back. Hopefully, the same way I came. And not in a bundle. With the house thoroughly checked over, the eviction is complete. This, this is crazy. They didn't beat this property down. Probably like a 
fifty thousand dollars worth of damage, maybe Thanks. more. I think that's us done. I'm the last person to turn the lights out. Have you got screws to put the door back on the back? Yeah, I've got some screws. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Take care. Oh, happy day. Somebody asked him I'm streaming on multiple platforms. Nah, man, I think the shows I watch, they wouldn't be allowed on some platforms. Not this one in particular, but other stuff. In 2017, the number of people contacting a UK counselling charity to seek help with their debts rose by nearly 30% since the previous year. Three quarters of debtors said they were afraid to open their post. And over 90% had used some form of credit to pay an essential bill or other debt. Don't High be, court enforcement agents... Don't be that family member or friend. Because <laughs> people be acting weird when they want when it's time when the time come to get that back. Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in Faversham, Kent, chasing a debt of over four thousand pounds owed by Mary McIntyre to a former neighbour. Got quite an interesting one next. Mrs. Mary McIntyre owes money for some substantial vet fees when her dog attacked the client's dog. This will be fun then. I'm going to use you as a shield. We're there to collect 4,326 quid. It's somewhere around there. Hey, yeah, that's it, it. That's the one. Heart in the window. Cool. Try and be inconspicuous. Mate, my middle name's inconspicuous. Gary and Connor need to get into the house to enforce the writ. But with a potentially dangerous dog on site, they'll have to tread carefully. I got a feeling there's going to be like a little chihuahua or something. Hi, can I speak to Mary, please? Yeah, I'm sleeping. Hi there. Um, Mary, we're enforcement agents. Yeah. We're here with the High Court Writs. I've spoken to the court. I've sent off all my paperwork to them to right. reduce my payments, and I've not heard back from Canterbury Court yet. The client has decided to step it up to the High Court for enforcement purposes, so we can still accept an arrangement, but we have to get an idea for your circumstances. I'll give you a copy of the High Court Writ. While Gary is talking to Mary at the door, Connor goes round the back to check the whereabouts of the dog. Connor, this is a spooky Finding situation. The gate and then the back door unlocked, he makes peaceful entry into the house. Connor, you're moving well. Oh. Fortunately, the dog seems friendly. Oh, that's okay. But Mary has other ideas. Hello. Uh, 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 no, no. Do this. No, 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 please. This crib is derelict. <laughs> don't come into my house. I can like do this. that. I didn't actually let you in. You don't have to. The high court writ. If my dog gets run over, believe me. Dog's I'm there. Not... She didn't bark and growl or anything at me. She's not good with strangers. I am just warning you. That's fine. Don't touch her because I don't want you to get bitten. Mary, I was a dog handler at Sandhurst. Hello. I'm, um... Hey, baby. That's what I wouldn't touch the fire with you. No, it's <laughs> not a dangerous dog at all. Dog at all. That, was just... that dog is not wagging its tail. He's just waiting for his moment, maybe. Oh no. Dog bitten anything. Mary, can, can you, you shut the front door, please? This is ridiculous. Please stop touching the dog. She is not friendly. I've, I've yet to see any evidence to say she's not. Can we move into the other room? Please? Okay, let's go. Okay, you're upsetting me. Then Mary surprises the agents. Today is actually my birthday. Happy and birthday. Cannot, but no, it's not a happy birthday, is it? <laughs> Why would he say that? With you two coming into my house. Gary and Connor are now in an unexpected situation. Their visit may be bad timing for the debtor, but the agents still have to get this case resolved one way or another. Yeah, sorry, Mary. Put your dogs on a leash, be able to handle your dog then. Attack. The agent's visit was bad timing for her. Today is actually my birthday. Happy and birthday. I cannot, but no, it's not a happy birthday, is it? With you two coming into my house. 
Now the agents have to try and calm Mary down and get this case back on track. And then Mary wanted her dog to be vicious so bad. Like, come on. We're here chill. to try and collect the balance on behalf of the client. Sometimes that remains removal of goods. Sometimes it's because people wish to pay it instead. Okay. We don't want to remove any goods. But I'll tell you the day is. goods for you to everything in here is basically third hand. But I'm still willing to offer to, to pay something today. How much can you pay today? And how much can you pay monthly? £50. Today or monthly? Monthly. I'll pay you £50 today and £50 monthly. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be enough. I'm a single parent of two children. I don't even so, receive any child maintenance. I actually said to the judge in court, what can, I don't have that kind of money. I explain my circumstances. You can see I'm not lying. When people are honest, they're still... That's, see, that's why I ain't got no dog, man. I can't... I'm not going to do that. My dog bites your dog, now I gotta pay. Like, your dog should have <laughs> respected my dog's space. You know what I'm saying? It flows. And it be it becomes obvious that somebody's being truthful. And it turns the whole visit into a much easier thing to manage. And ultimately, they, just, they, they realize at the end that we're actually there to help. We're not always there to take things, but they must accept that we are there on behalf of somebody else that they owe money to. The agents have been at the house for half an hour when Mary's friend arrives. She sounds like she looks like she's gonna escalate the situation. It's now quarter past twelve. I'm gonna give you till half past twelve to make whatever phone calls you need and come back to me with a reasonable offer. And then if either there's no money paid by half past twelve or there's no offer, then we're gonna start the removal process. If we do go down that road. Another eight hundred and twenty-nine pound twenty pence will be added, and we'll go up to five thousand one hundred and fifty-five pound. The deadline is set, and Mary immediately gets her mother on the phone. Are you giving me till half past twelve? Yeah, of course. I'll pass you over. It's my mum. Okay. Hello. Mum, not gonna be able to help. Hello there. As far as like making it go away, unless she pay. McIntyre's mother. Obviously, if you were willing to help her out with this, then it would be regarded as a voluntary payment because it's not your debt, and that would be the case would be settled. Have you got a debit card that we can do it over the phone? I've got a debit card here, yes, but I haven't got that amount of money in my account. Um, oh, God. It seems that Mary's mother can't help. Well, how much do so you get? So Mary gets back on the phone. How we get on? I don't know how well you know Mary. Do you? I know Mary, friends? and she she doesn't have a pot to piss in. It sounds like she's making efforts to get the money. So she is. In order to do this job, you have to have a certain amount of patience and tolerance, because not everybody is in a situation where they can pay straight away. So it's about being patient enough to allow them to make the efforts to get the money. Mary's time to raise some funds is nearly up. But at the 11th hour, she gets her brother on the phone. Hello? Sorry, who am I talking to? My name's Gary Brown. I'm one of the enforcement agents. You, you couldn't have picked a better day to go around to her as you know it's her birthday, do you? I do now. I didn't know well, when I knocked... Don't nobody give a damn about the day this woman was born. On the door? No, you probably Respectfully. don't really care that much anyway. But hey. Well, it's not for me to say, oh, I'm sorry to the client. We're not going to enforce this writ today because it's the debtor's birthday. What, what does, does needs to be paid today? Uh, four thousand three hundred twenty-six pounds seventy-one pence. Okay. Are you able to do that? I am, yes. Mary's brother oh, pays his yeah. sister's debt off in full. There That's you gone brother. through. All right. Thank you very much. It's always better to get the payment from the debtor, but if that's not possible, then sometimes family are there to help, and it means that we can wrap up the case and get the result we need for the client. With more friends now here for Mary's birthday, it's been an awkward case. I get that this isn't a pleasant visit for you, but there are always people out there that don't pay the money that they owe I think you're a genuine person and you're just on hard times at the moment. But it's not our place to judge. Now it's finally resolved. The agents can leave. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Problem solved. Love you, brother, but you got all that brother something. It's 
Oh, good result. Him. Got there in the end. I don't even think we need a recap of the cases, do we? Everybody paid, yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. Tell a little bit like, comment, I'm gone.